welcome back to another session of introduction to building estimate students in the previous session of the building estimate we have learned what is estimate it is the process of calculating the cost of the project by multiplying the quantities and the rates this is the probable cost of the construction then we have seen the data required to prepare the estimate there were three major data drawings specifications and item rates after that we have seen types of estimate there were seven types of estimate approximate estimate detail estimate quantity estimate revised estimate supplementary estimate supplementary and revised estimate and the last was annual repair or maintenance estimate then we have discussed each of them into detail after that we have seen method of preparation for the approximate estimate there were 10 methods which were including service unit method plinth area method floor area method carpet area method cubical content method typical bay method percentage method cost comparison method approximate quantities method empirical equation by cbri method so we have discussed few of them then at last we have discussed about reasons of actual cost exceeding the estimated cost that by which reasons your actual cost is always greater than the estimated cost so i hope we are clear up to that point now students today in this session we are going to see some of the terminologies some of the special terms which are being used in the estimate because students when you are preparing the estimate this is a pre construction stage activity you are not aware about all the things which are going to happen in the construction project so there are terminologies or there are terms to help the estimator let us see so we are going to understand this nine terminologies which includes provisional sum prime cost provisional quantities spot items contingencies work charge establishment day work water charges and overhead charges so we are going to see those nine different terminologies let us begin with the provisional sum it is the amount provided in the estimate and the bill of quantities of the work which are to be carried out by some special contractors and their works are of some special natures for an example installation of lift installation of air conditioning some of the major electrical fittings so these are the work which are to be completed by the specialized contractor and we are not aware about uh, the certain details of it while preparing the estimate so we can provide a provisional sum for such kind of work so students in the summary if if you can if you want to remember remember that provisional sum is provided for the special works which are to be carried out by the special contractors moving forward such works are to be done by the licensed contractor or through the separate department to be engaged by the owner on a separate tender basis payment of the work will be depending upon the quantities executed by the uh, in the as the stated in the estimate so it is not necessary that contractor will get exact amount as the stated in provisional sum the specification should clearly state that by whom the payments are going to be made by the owner or by the main general contractor main contractor or principal contractor if the payment is going to be made by the main contractor then the overall uh, work control will be in the hands of main contractor so that that should be specified in the specification students this specialized contractor can be either engaged by the main contractor and sub contractor or by the directly owner so we need to define that who is going to make the payment i hope we are clear up to this point moving forward 
the next is prime cost when the quantities of different very uh, different item of works are being worked out it is not always possible to define everything which is necessary to complete the work for an example water supply fitting sanitary fittings door and window fittings etc these are the items which are being finalized at the at the execution stage by the architecture by the owner or the owner's representative so detail estimate is not being prepared for the such items uh, and the lump sum amount is being provided as prime cost in the tender so that lump sum amount against of this kind of item of works is known as prime cost i hope we are clear about what is prime cost moving forward the supply of the articles will be made by the contractor on the receiving of the approval from the clients engineer or the engineer in charge in prime cost contractor is not allowed to have any profit so he will get the only amount which he is providing to his vendor the uh, apart from the cash discount he he cannot make profit on this so if he is purchasing a article in 80 rupees he is going to get 80 rupees not 81 or not 82 including his profit so that is one of the note uh, uh, one of the point to be noted the materials or the articles which are being used in the prime cost quant uh, prime cost item of works should be obtained or purchased by some separate agency so i hope we are clear about the prime cost you can remember the prime cost as things which are not finalized by while the preparing the estimate they are they are to be finalized at some future date so moving forward the next is provisional quantities when the quantities of certain item of works are not very accurate or not certain then provisional quantities are provided for such items for this purpose the quantities are being calculated and kept separately and marked as provisional quantities for a building if the nature of soil is uncertain and if it is thought that that extra depth of foundation is required the additional quantities of that excavation foundation pcc brickwork in machinery are calculated separately and kept in the estimate marked as provisional students let us discuss this example in detail for an example if initial as per drawing the depth of foundation was 25 feet but now by if we are looking at the nature of soil uh, the engineer or the client thought that it is required 30 feet so provisional quantity are being calculated initial 25 25 feet quantities quantities for the 25 feet height or depth is going to be the same then he will calculate for another 5 feet and that additional 5 feet will be known as provisional not the entire 30 feet so keep this in your mind while providing or while uh, while seeing the provisional quantities moving forward in the tender and in the bill of quantities this provisional quantities shall be marked separately provided separately to the contractor and the contractor has to quote the rate separately for these provisional quantities now the payment of this provisional quantities will be made on the completion of such item of works it may happen that extra depth of excavation does not required while uh, while the execution of the work so contractor will not get any payment of that provisional quantities or instead of 5 feet only 3 feet of excavation is extra required so we'll get the cost of only for 3 3 feet extra depth so that is one of the major advantage for client in the case of provisional quantities that by providing the provisional quantity client is not entitled to give the, all the money to the contractor he will receive contractor will receive money only when he is going to execute the work and execute the whichever quantity he executes the um, uh, such amount he will get so i hope we are clear about it
the advantage of this kind of uh, estimate the advantage of provisional quantity is that there will be no delay in the sanction of revised estimate due to excess in cost now thought uh, think that that you have not provided this provisional quantity for 5 feet now actually it is required to uh, to excavate extra 5 feet so you need to provide uh, provide a revised estimate that pro that estimate will be sanctioned and then you have to resume the work so there are chances of delay so this is one of the major advantage moving forward the next is spot items there are certain items for which it is not possible for the estimator to fix an amount without seeing and studying them into detail such item are known as spot items the estimate of such items can be provided by only after the estimate of such items can be provided only after the inspection and taking detail measurement at the site so few of the example of the spot items are demolishing the existing structure opening in the door or opening in the wall or cleaning of site the estimator should provide the accurate details about which are the which are item of works are spot item so that the contractor can put up a fair price for that spot items so students spot items that means the the item of works for whom the quantity or the estimate cannot be prepared until you can see them uh, on site inspect and study them into detail or by taking a measurement on the site so these items are known as spot items moving forward the term day work is used to denote a procedure for costing or valuing an item of work on the basis of material used actual labor engaged in the work and the equipment employed for the completion of the work the day work is adopted for the certain item of works which are which cannot be included under certain heads such as designing of the plaster work front architectural finish of the building underwater work or construction of an ornamental door so these are the items which are being paid by the day work for this purpose day worksheet are being prepared and maintained by the contractor stating the material used time taken by the laborers to complete the contract uh, complete the work types of labor the equipments which are being used in the work and these sheets are being checked and verified by the owner or client so i hope you are clear about day work moving forward if the considerable amount of day work is included in the contract then client will provide the details of various materials and various labors required for that day work and contractor has to quote the rate for that materials and the labors those rates should be inclusive of cost of transportation of material contractor supervision charges contractor's profit contractor's overhead charges and use of contractor's own equipment so this should be included in the rates the day work cannot be commenced until the contractor gets an approval from the client or client's engineer yes contractor has to inform by a formal notice to engineer in charge or the client that he is going to execute this work as in form of day work so that he can map closely uh, monitor the work so that should be done i hope you are clear up to this point in the session now moving forward the next is contingencies the contingencies is indicating the incidental expenses of the miscellaneous character which can not be classified under certain subhead so for this kind of expenses you can call it as contingencies to meet such unforeseen unforeseen expenses generally a 3 to 5% of the total cost is provided as the contingencies students 
this 3 to 5 percent is very old percentage currently presently in the market the contingencies are taken as 10 to 15 percent so the miscellaneous incidental expenses which cannot be classified under any subhead should be executed or expend uh, or the expenditure of sub, such kind of work shall be added into contingencies for an example in the execution of any project there is a plastering of uh, cement mortar 1 is to 4 ratio on the stairs and wall now it is desired while the execution it is being desired by the contractor or the owner that nosing should be provided which is not in the estimate so for this kind of purpose it is known as contingencies that is incidental expenses you cannot provide nosing in under certain head so that is contingency moving forward the next is work charge establishment so the work charge establishment will include such temporary establishment such as technical supervisor or the departmental store in the connection with the work work charge staff may be a technical person or under the staff person to assist or help him such as guard but the work charge staff can, cannot have non-industrial employees such as draftsman, typist, clerk, etc. So you can only include the technical staff. Every payment to the member of work charge staff uh, either being made by the uh, on the accounts of his daily wages or the traveling expenses is directly charged to the work for which they are employed. And for this purpose, generally 2 to 2.5 percent is provided of the total cost as work charge establishment. So I hope we are clear about what is work charge establishment. Moving forward, the next is water charges. For drinking purpose of the workers and for the construction work, the arrangement of water either by sinking tube well or by taking temporary water connection from the government is become a necessary thing. In order to meet up certain expenses, 1 to 1.5 percent is being provided of the total cost as water charges in the analysis of rate. So I hope this is very simple water charges 1 to 1.5 percent. So now let us see the last terminology which is overhead charges. Overhead charges includes the general office charges such as uh, stationary, administrative, rent, salaries which are not contributing directly to the construction but the, these are the indirect costs and do not have any productive expense on the job. So overhead charges can be further divided into job overhead and general overhead. So the job overhead consisting of salaries of the employees handling of materials, repair, carriage and depreciation for the tools and plants, amenities for the laborers, workmen's insurance, interest on investment, lighting at site, public relations, etc. While the general overhead includes establishment of office, stationery, printing, postage, taxes, rent, traveling ex expenses, etc. So these are the overhead charges. So this is it. That was all about in today's session. I hope you have learned it very well. In case of any query or doubt, you can always contact me on my mail or my number. Thank you.